Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today is episode 37 of your Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode. In, in, in today's episode, we're going to try to recover that horrible record that we are, 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 are ourselves into episode where we are 2, 10, and 2. And it's not a very nice place to be at for the Chicago Blackhawks after making some big moves to pick up Ivan Barbashev and a new young prospect in Jurgen Schroeder. The team has fallen apart. We don't know what's going on. And honestly, it fucking sucks to see this team just kind of implode on itself. And the way that we're going to be going for next year's draft... We're not too bad. I mean, we don't have very many picks coming towards next year's draft, but we do have that first overall selection, which is nice to see. But we don't want to be down in a position where we need to be able to trade away or to trade away everybody and rebuild the team. I really don't want to do that. Um, now, Lucas Trevecca, he's been a great coach for us. Um, fantastic coach for the past. He's had some great playoff times with us. But on the man, man. And, 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 and to go and move on um, from Lucas Trevecca, who's won us a cup, who's done tons of great stuff for the Chicago Blackhawks. But I think it's time to move on from, 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 from uh, Lucas Trevecca and make a new life. And I think that's going to be the best thing for us to do this year is kind of start that and to move on, move on from Lucas Trevecca. We have a bunch of people on our call. Trade away Meyer, McLeod, Murray. Uh, Shea has to stay on the team. We are stuck with Han. Well, we could trade away Han, Arju, Pionk, and Kane, but we have not to trade them to off, off contending teams, of course. But I was thinking, what coach, coach, coach should we throw? Should we try Riley Brower, who has never coached a game before? The coach will be the big team. Right, 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 right. right, right. That, that's going to be a big decision because we also have to find somebody that fits our team. Somebody like uh, Cedric, who's been, hasn't had very much, can fit the team very well. Um, everybody else, I mean, you could either try Harp Harpin, who hasn't coached before either. But um, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to fire Trevecca. It's going to be a thing that we're going to have to do. I would like to see how well. Uh, Riley Brower looks as our head coach to see how the lines look um, and if, if it fits better on his system and the team looks really good, which it already kind of does. I mean, it really does work with his system, right? Like, it really kind of does. Shooter with Barbashev and Kane, that, that system works there. The third line works defensively. Uh, defense, of course. That, 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 any boost on good assistant coach, but just, just for the fact that we need a new coach. So somebody that could fit the team got I, I, I feel like be 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 bad 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 coach like I don't know I don't want to try I would like to try Riley Brower but I don't want to risk trying him and then him just being the worst coach in the world he has a 59 percent so it's nowhere near 69 percent it doesn't really fit really well with their defense core so Riley Brower I'm just not gonna we're gonna hire a new coach Lucas Trevecca was a great coach, but I think it's time for us to move on uh, and find somebody that fits the team uh, perfectly, like almost what he did. Um, so we're going to look at that 69 overall, that team fits. So Shedrick Calvert fits well with Dylan Strom. Not so well with Bockwist, but everybody else like Shea, he fits well with. Uh, Yoko Harju, he fits well with. Um, oh, shit, dropping my pen. Um, and everything else, he doesn't look too bad. And his record's not bad. He's one of Jack Adams before, so he's not looking too bad as a coach, and I feel like that would be... A pretty good coach for us to fit. Francis uh, uh, Carpenter, he's not a bad fit for the team either. Uh, but I feel like Calvert uh, will be the coach to go for for this team for this year. He will be our head coach uh, coming into this season. And hopefully he can help us turn this team around, make the team a bit better. He's A's practically in every category, so he's looking very well. Um, hopefully he can help turn this team around. Cedric Calvert is going to be a guy that we are – bringing it to the team to help us. We had to fire one of my favorite coaches in Lucas Trevecca. Trevecca was one of my favorite coaches. He was carrying this team for a long time, making it one of the best teams that he could possibly make it into. And now we're going into another season where we're going to be missing him. So hopefully Cedric Calvert comes in and helps the team out, uh, make the team a bit better coming into this season. So we lose once again and, uh, Fucking holy shit. Another loss there against the Washington Capitals. We're 2-11-3, I think it is, right? 2-11-2. Fucking hell. I think this year we might actually have to rebuild the team a bit. 
like honestly, we might have to rebuild the team a bit, and that's that's scary to say because I mean we've been working hard for this team for a long damn time to make this team the best team it could possibly be, and now coming in this year, you're like questioning you might have to rebuild this team and make it all young again and rebuild around uh, Jorgen Schroeder. You might have to do that. That might be a decision that we might have to make this upcoming season. Which is a little bit of worrying because, like, I don't really want to rebuild this team. I, I'm loving this team. It's been a team that I've been enjoying to build and enjoying to get to the position where we're at. And uh, just to let you guys know, a quick update on everything. It, when At the end of the month, I am going to be buying MLB The Show. I know it's already came out and stuff like that. I just don't have enough money to buy it. So once I get MLB The Show, the Chicago Blackhawks series will cancel. There will be no more. Um, Chicago Blackhawks videos practically that's when the series will end so we're going to try to get as much through as we can uh, throughout the next couple of seasons uh, if maybe so maybe we will continue I'm not too sure of what my schedule will look like because of the OGRs uh, not being into play anymore um, we might be making some more content and more gaming videos and stuff like that with the OGRs gone and stuff like that so to break it I'm happy yeah I'm happy that be to break it but that's another big decision. What do we do with Alex DeBranket? Because he has his, um, he wants to sign a new contract with the team. So I mean, this team got to step it back up, or uh, we're gonna start playing like shit, or we're gonna have to go through a major rebuild, which I really don't want to go through. I want to win another cup before we end this series off, and that's gonna be our big goal right now is trying to turn this team around with a new coach, with a new team. And we have young players. I mean, we have young players that are going to be coming up here sooner or later, and they're going to be good for the future for the Chicago Blackhawks. But it just seems like we get just cannot get a handle of this season. The Chicago Blackhawks just seem to not be able to win right now. I'll be right back, guys. All right, sorry, guys. I just had to take a call there, and I accidentally simulated a bit. So we'll take a look at how much I simulated here. Dylan Strom pissed off at the... Okay, whatever, bro. This team is it's going down in the dumps, man. So uh, in the past... Holy shit. This team, bro, I don't know, man, like, it's really falling apart. It has been, it's really falling apart. This team, bro. I don't want to do any big trades, because, I mean, if you do a big trade, you're... What's our record right now? What are we looking like in the last 10 games? 6-3-1. and one. Hey, we're, we're turning our record around a little bit. We're still one of the worst teams in the league, one of the worst teams in the division, at least. But, I mean, I don't know, man. This is a very confusing season. I, I don't know what's going on. The first line seems to be doing good. The second line, not too shabby. Uh, Bellamy, McLeod, they're not doing too shabby. Oh, Bellamy would fit perfectly on that line. Yeah, we'll try Bellamy there. <gasps> Five plus, bro? Jesus. Oh, Hannafin. Jesus Christ, Hannafin, buddy. You're not doing so well this year. No one's really doing fantastic this year. Everyone's just feeling shitty it's it's i don't know it's this has been one of our worst years as a team this year i don't think we've had any like throughout the chicago blackhawks tenure and me being their gm we haven't had this this bad of a season in a long fucking time like this has been our worst season and it's going to be our worst season yet it's going to be worst season to be on record of chicago blackhawks and that's without a doubt we are having a really bad season this year we're not able to really gain any momentum as a team and it sucks and, and i feel this team like you you want to be doing good you want to be playing that type of hockey that where we can be competing as a team but when we're playing this bad i don't know Maybe we can turn the season around. We're 6-3-1 and one in this month, and we're starting to win some games. And all we need is that big 10-game winning streak right now. Is there we go. Three in a row right there for the Chicago Blackhawks. We're starting to turn things around a little bit. Starting to get some more wins here now, which is nice to see. A big win there against the New Jersey Devils. So we're not going back and forth on these wins. We're starting to like collectively get wins and a lot of wins. Two in a row wins, and then we take a loss. Come on, boys. And then I shoot out loss there against the Nashville Predators. Fucking hell. This team is... It's having a rough season this year here, boys. It's been a rough season. Jorgen Shooter. You can uh, jump right back in the lineup once again. How well is Bellamy doing on that second line? Oh, yeah. That line is better off with him. And, and we're starting to get more explosive now. That's nice to see. I'm, I think we're really missing Taves and Kane. Those are two players that were helping this team out so good. And making this team the best team it could possibly can be. I don't know. Philip Cronell. 
21, 19, and 7. We're starting to turn our record around a bit. We're starting to win some games here. Starting to put some things together. We're legit a point away from being in a wild card position. So that's great for the Chicago Blackhawks right now. And there we are in a wild card position. A team that was in last place to start the season off is getting right back into a playoff position, which is perfect for the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Right where we want to be right now. This is a perfect position for the team. I don't think we have any prospects that we have to throw in the lineup. We can just take a look at Scratched. I don't think we have to throw in. Oh, wait. Low Elite. Sasha Cool. We'll have to throw him in. And that's it. Sasha Cool. Just the defenseman there. Um, who's a me or Low Elite. Who I'm hoping could jump up in the lineup sooner or later. And that's a big thing. We need to start developing and keeping picks and stuff like that. But this year has been just a rough year for the Chicago Blackhawks. I haven't been able to put wins together. I don't think we're going to do any trades at trade deadline there. I don't think that's going to have any effect on the team right now. As, and I don't want to make any deals. That's going to be a big question is what we're going to do at trade deadline right now. We're 24, uh, 24 20, and 8. And uh, we're seeming they can't keep those consistent wins together. Which is worrying me because you, you think about it, we might have to rebuild this team. You might have to rip apart a lot of the players that you love and you've been cheering for for a long time, like the Brinkett, like a fucking uh, Shrome and stuff like that. This is a team that, I don't know, is a team that's changing a lot. Gustav Lindstrom, Henry Yokoharju throw you in the lineup. Bakwa Shea, you're still struggling. How how well would Yoka Harju? Try Yoka Harju. Dumoulin, Neil Pionk, they're our best fucking defensive pair right now. Jesus. They're doing so well this year. There we go. Get some wins in there, boys. Big victor, big win, our game against the Toronto Maple Leafs that we need a win against. And we lose against them. See, with us so far out and us losing so many games that we're losing... I don't even know if it's really worth trying to make this team a playoff team this year. And that's that's a difficult thing to say. Because this team won a Stanley Cup two years ago and we're already falling apart as a team. And that really fucking sucks. Graham Clark. I don't give a shit. Just keep on assimilated. That's what matters the most. Oh, shit. Oh. There we are. We are in a wild card spot, so I'm not going to do any trades. I think I'm just basically going to keep the team together right now. We're in a wild card spot. We're a tweener team this year for some fucking reason. I don't know why. But we're in there. We're in the playoff spot, so we're just going to keep the team the way that it is. We're scoring goals defensively. We're playing well defensively. We're just that team that just cannot get their shit together, weirdly enough. We're doing a lot of the shit right. It's just, I think we turned the season around. We just had a bad start to the season, and we have not really been able to get on that right path. The Brankins been having a great season, though. 58 points in 62 games, type of season that we've been wanting from the Brankin. Team Umar, 56. Dylan Strom up there with 49 points. Barbashev with 47. The type of season that we were looking at from Ivan Barbashev to give us some more speed. Uh, Evander came 44. Bellamy, 37. He's having a career year this year, which is nice to see. Um, he's already passing his career high from last year. Uh, Jorgen Schroeder, his first season is not doing too bad. 30 points on that third line with Hartman and Nick Merkley and Michael McLeod there. Not looking too bad defensively. Adam Balquist, Hannafin, uh, Neil Pionk has been doing great this year alongside Brian Dumoulin. And Matt Murray, he's been the guy that I think is, I would like to get rid of him. Matt Murray is a guy that I would like to get rid of. Edgar Kavanaugh has been stepping up big time for the team as Matt Murray's been the weak link to the team this year. He's really just has not been able to put shit together for himself. We could try to waive his no movement clause, but most likely he'll probably want to stay on the team. And that's just, and I just know Matt Murray, right? We could put that thing together, but would he want to be traded from the Chicago Blackhawks? I'm not too sure. He's been loving this team since day one, so I think it'd be a for uh, to, to trade him away. Alexander Nylander leading the league in points in there in St. Louis. How was St. Louis doing with uh, the new players there in town uh, with Kirby Dak there? 43 points this season for him. Uh, not too bad for him. 
So, what, let's take a look. Let's take a look if there's any goaltenders looking uh, before we spin the wheel because my laptop's going to be slow as fuck right now if we try to pop up the wheel and shit. Um, but I don't think there's going to be any goaltenders open to be available to pick up. Maybe we go with a one-two punch sort of deal, like pick up a John Gibson to help support our goaltender this year. Because John Gibson, he would be a nice supporting goaltender there. 9-11 this year, he's doing very well this year. Just so we can help out Matt Murray, right? Because he seems like he's having a rough year this year. And he's not able to get his foot in the uh, his feet in the ground. You pick up John Gibson. That can help us out with Golting a bit. I feel like everything else looks pretty damn good. Like I mean, Adam Bachquist is having a rough year this year. Noah Hannafin as well. But I mean, you, you help him out with a little bit of a, a good goaltender, like maybe a Robin Lehner, who's having kind of a rough season. But last year, he had 39 wins, and he was fantastic in the playoffs. Because John Gibson's a fuck ton of money that we're going to have to give up. But I mean, Edgar Cabanas should cover it. I don't want to just risk the future of the team for a fucking goaltender that's just going to be a rental for us, right? So we're going to have to play this very smart. So let's see how much... Or Eric Colbert. How well is Eric Colbert doing this year? Ooh, 921. But he hasn't been a full-time starter. And he hasn't really started in the playoffs, so... John Gibson or Robin Lehner would be the two big starters for me, I think. John Gibson, not very much value. That's not very much value you'd have to pay for him. You legit have to pay. I would like to keep Tara Vinen. So we'll trade away Kavanaugh. We'd like to keep Tara Vinen because he's a future goaltender for us, right? He's going to be our, He's gonna fucking take over Matt Murray's job. And that's what we need him to do is take over Matt Murray's job. So we'll give them Ever Edgar Kavanaugh. We will give them... Uh, Jeffrey Coffrey and Albrecht. Some nice prospects there. And a third round pick of next year, St. Louis's pick. With that, I would like to pick up a fifth and a sixth for this year's draft. Will this go through? Yes, it does. John Gibson, welcome to the Chicago Blackhawks, buddy. So that's a big deal. Helping out the goal team in a bit this year. And then Tara Vina will come into the team next year and help us out with that backup goaltending situation. So that is going to really help with our back-to-back uh, -back combo. And uh, hopefully that makes our team a little bit better. And then we also picked up some picks for this year's draft as well. So John Gibson, Matt Murray, this should be an lethal um, combo going into the playoffs, right? Both John Gibson and Matt Murray. You know John Gibson can perform well in the playoffs. He did last year, 10-3. and three. He hasn't had that deep run in a little while, but you know John Gibson, he could be a big playoff performer for us. So hopefully uh, both Matt Murray and John Gibson could carry us through the playoffs this upcoming year. So we'll have to see about that. So hopefully we, they could carry us to the, uh, the playoffs right now. We just need a couple more wins. Well, maybe make it a. I'm thinking here. Should we make a depth pickup? A depth like playmaker. How well has Nick Merkley been doing? Nick Merkley. Nick Merkley. He actually hasn't been doing too bad. And Jordan Schroeder, he's been playing pretty well. Nick Merkley's kind of like that. So I, we need just we gotta keep the team the way that it is. We can't just keep spending money and stuff like that. So. We just got to keep the way that the team is. We made that one big move, picking up John Gibson. We gave up a couple prospects to pick up John Gibson. So we need to just keep the team the way that it is right now. So that's what we're going to do is keep the team the way that it is. With John Gibson, he's going to be net, I think, tonight against the Vancouver Canucks. And uh, let's see how the outcome with John Gibson. And we win 4-2 out of boys. That's what I'm talking about. We just need to put together some big victories. We're going to be a scary-looking team. A lot of teams are going to look at us and say that we are we have two good goaltenders. Whoever you're facing, you're facing a good goaltender and either John Gibson or Matt Murray. So let's get some wins together here, boys. That's what we're going to be looking for. As uh, I like a Barbashev. He's jumping up. Very nice. Evander Kane got to put you back in the lineup. Evander Kane dropped a bit, but, I mean, he's still producing. It's a plus five, so they're getting really a boost. You got to think that they're all big win there against the Tampa Bay Lightning. We're really putting some wins together right now. Dylan Jones shows up with a concussion. That'll be fine. He'll be in the line, 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 line up April 9th. Um, we'll just replace player. We'll put Jack Stanika right up there for right now. We're in a playoff position, so unless we bail out of it, then we'll, we'll fix up the lineup. But, I mean, Stanika, I mean, yeah, we could fix it up here. But I don't want to. I feel like Michael McLeod will go up into the first line. Boone Jenner. 
Uh, we'll put Nick Markley. Does A2 Ratu fit, fit there? We, yeah, we'll do, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Boone Jenner, Nick Merkley, Jorgen Schroeder, Michael McLeod with Team Meyer, and DeBrinkett. That's what we'll do there. So we'll continue on the simulation here for the Chicago Blackhawks as we keep picking up some big key victories as we have a huge lead in the wild card spot right now. It's looking like we're going to be making it back to the playoffs as Brady Shea, we need to put him back in the lineup. Very nice work here, boys. Very nice work. We worked our asses off to get into this position. How was John Gibson doing since he got uh, since we uh, picked him up? Six and three, and with one shout out, a nine sixteen, doing better than what he was in Anaheim. And Matt Murray, I mean, he's doing a bit better, but not as great as John Gibson. I think John Gibson is the for sure fire starter for the Chicago Blackhawks coming into this season. I think he's going to be the guy that we look at to rely on for this upcoming playoffs. And uh, I'd like to hear you guys' comments on who do we start coming into this playoffs. We're a wild card team this year, so we're going to be facing, I think it's going to be, we're second best in the wild card, so we're going to be facing the Los Angeles Kings. So that's going to be a very tough matchup. This is going to be no easy route to the Stanley Cup Finals this year. No easiness for us. So let's take a look at the season for the Chicago Blackhawks. As we started bottom tier team. We were one of the worst teams in the league this year. And uh, we, we came back. We had a great end of the season. We were one of the best teams defensively up alongside of the Colorado Avalanche. One of the best teams on the power play. And not just that. We had a great penalty kill as well. So we're looking at like a very lethal team coming into the playoffs. I am very, very excited about that. To break it, had a huge season this year, 79 points. Uh, way better than what he was last year, I feel. Uh, about a point difference. Uh, Ivan Barbashev had a great year, 65 points. Dylan Strom, 58. Vander Kane, 54 this year. What a great year from Vander Kane. He was a great depth pickup for the team. Uh, Harry Bellamy. He had a great year. Jorgen Schroeder also had a good year. Michael McLeod played great. Ryan Merkley. Everyone stepped up near the end of the season, which I like to see. Bockwist, he was playing well near the end of the season there. But everyone really stepped up near the end of the season there. John Gibson as well. He was a great goaltender for us to pick up. 7-3, a 9-20 save percentage. He's going to be the goaltender that we go in with the playoffs with. We're allowing him to be that big. Go, go, going into this playoff series. Hopefully going to pick up a huge playoff round against the Los Angeles Kings, which we're going to need. This is going to be a, a victory, which we're going to need to beat the Los Angeles Kings. That's that's a for sure fire thing that we need to do. So let's take a look at the lines of the Los Angeles Kings. And I feel confident with our team this year. We we were we fought off a lot of resiliency this year. We started off the year 2-10 and 2, and now we're facing up against Cole Papetta and the Los Angeles Kings. So let's take a look at this. So they got Bjork, Cole Papetta, and Adrian Kempe on their first line. Second line, they got Andre Palat, Tumas Hurdle, and Tumu Limon. Their second line, they got Brendan Lesbik, Andre Kopitar, and Yarmo Piltuk. And then they got Rasmus Kapara, Dylan Cousins, and Yerit Anderson Dolan. Then defensively, they got Joshua Pierce, Josh Morrissey, Cal Clegg, Daniel Chica, and then they also got Brunstrom, Stefan Brunstrom, and Drew Doughty. So very deep defense core, but holy shit. How does this team place first in the fucking division? It's probably because of their defense core, just alone. Their defense core is loaded. But I feel I'm going confident in this playoff round against a very good Los Angeles Kings. And I mean, that Pacific division was also weak. So it was in the best division in the world. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. And yeah, we would have been first place in the fucking, uh, well, we would have been second. But we would have been up there in the Pacific division. Our division was fucking loaded this year. It was scary. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Actually, I, I keep saying thank you very much for watching. But before I end the video, I'd like to see how well Cedric Calvert turned this team around this year. From a 2-10 and 10 start to what we were now, I'd like to see what he did to really help this team out. Because he was such a good coach this year. you got to give Cedric Calvert a pat on the back. You really do. He helped this team turn itself around to make it a playoff team. To push us into that playoff spot. We were 42-12-8 with this man's. So hopefully we can carry that into the playoffs. But for right now, guys, I'm going to sign off. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios, amigos.